Suppose we have ten lily pads and there is a frog on the second one. A snake is lurking under the first lily pad, and the frog has no idea, so it still has a ten percent chance to go left and be eaten. But more likely, the frog will go right with a ninety percent chance. This pattern will continue. The chance of going left will increase linearly, while the chance of going right will decrease linearly until the frog reaches the last lily pad. When the frog reaches the last lily pad, it will leave the pond and become free of danger. What is the probability that the frog will escape to freedom if it starts at the second lily pad? This is a question I posted on the community post, and I promise to animate it. So here it is. The first solution is based on the good old linear algebra. The intuition is that your probability of escaping from any pad should depend on your neighbors because you have to go through your neighbors. Let's define pi as the probability that the frog will escape from the lily pad number i. Therefore, p zero is zero because. You are already eaten, while p10 is one because you already escape, and by symmetry we identify that p5 is 0.5. Now let's focus on p1, the probability of escaping from pad one. P1 clearly depends on p0 and p2. Theoretically speaking, without worrying the numerical value, there are two ways to escape from pad one. You go to left with a ten percent probability, and you never return. But you can also go right with a ninety percent of probability, and you start your escape to the freedom at lady pad two, which gives us the probability p two. The same ideas applies to all other lily pads, and we will obtain a system of linear equations. Substitute the value for p zero and p five, which are zero and zero point five, and solve it. We find p one is sixty three over one hundred forty six. The second solution utilizes the so called transition matrix. A transition matrix is a matrix whose elements represent the probability of moving from one state to another. In our case, moving from one lily pad to another. For example, the first row are all zeros except the first one. It means if the frog reaches the first lily pad, it will remain in the stomach of the snake forever. We can obtain the two-step transition matrix by squaring the transition matrix. Notice that it was impossible to go to lily pad number three to lily pad number one directly in one step, but by multiplying the corresponding row and column, we will find that the two-step probability of going from lily pad number three to lily pad number one is no longer zero. This operation can continue, and we will see that the lily pads are becoming more and more connected after more and more steps. Now let's push the matrix exponentiation to infinity. T infinity one ten is the probability of transitioning from pad one to pad ten ultimately, and it's exactly the value we are looking for. Just a quick set note: recall how multiplication of matrix works. Finding this limiting matrix is exactly solving a system of linear equations as well. It's always a good habit to check your result against your intuition and common sense. So let's take a closer look of this transition matrix T infinity. Notice that only the first column and the last columns are non-zeros. It means that the frog will have to face death or freedom. There is no middle ground. This makes sense because those two pads, the first and the last one, are called the so-called absorbing states, which means if you go there, you stay there forever. The second observation is the monotonically changing values. It makes sense because the closer you are to death or freedom, the more likely you will meet death or freedom. The last observation is that even if the frog starts with only one pad away from the snake, it still has a chance of more than forty percent to escape. This agrees with our intuition as well because we do have a tendency to drag the frogs to the central pads. 
It looks like I cannot do this experiment physically. Hey, Cut Murphy, I'm pretty sure you simulated this answer, so I'm going to simulate my answer as well. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.